Welcome. My name is Lee Hollins. I'm a retired battalion chief from Cedar Hammock Fire Rescue in Bradenton, Florida. And in this session of Fire Engineering Training Minutes, I'm going to be talking about the piping underneath the tanker trailer and some other issues as it relates to any uh, type of an emergency situation we may be called to. First of all, it's important to note that these tanker trailers are typically loaded from the bottom at, the, at a terminal. So when, when this is connected at a terminal, the gasoline, diesel fuel, whatever product, ethanol, is going to be loaded from the bottom and it's going to fill up these compartments in this multi-compartment tanker. When they're done filling and everything's disconnected, the, the operator's going to pull away, they're going to go to their route and, and dump fuel in underground tanks via gravity feed. Keep in mind, with that situation, these lines down here, which are called wet lines or belly lines, those are going to be full of product unless this tanker is empty or each compartment is empty. So they're going to be full of product. So what we typically see in emergency situations is a car that underrides a gasoline tanker trailer and it's going to wipe out this piping underneath here in many cases. With that said, you're going to have quite a bit of product that's going to spill out onto the vehicle that underrode the tanker and it may ignite. The catalytic converter on a car is a perfect ignition source for these situations. So that is a fairly common situation that occurs. When it does, these belly valves, so there's one belly valve on each compartment that are located up where these pipes go, those belly valves, the, the housing is designed to shear off when a car underrides this uh, area. And when it shears off, uh, the, the actual valve should stay in place. Doesn't always work that way. But if it does, you're only gonna get the, the liquid out of these lines here and not the whole compartment dumping fuel down. So that's the way it's supposed to work. The other situation I'd like to bring to your attention involves the landing gear. So if there was a fire, say, at the back of this tanker trailer because of the tires and wheels, what you're going to have is you're going to have a situation where that operator may pull his or her tractor away from the tanker trailer because that's the exposure and that probably costs a half million dollars. So with that situation, you have to know if you have any control of that that this tanker trailer will not be supported by this landing gear with a fully loaded tanker trailer. So you, you, if you have anything to, to control that, you don't want that, that operator to pull the rig away because this tanker trailer could come crashing down and these legs puncture this compartment. Now you got 3,000 gallons of product on the ground. A bad situation is going to be made worse. So I just want to bring these couple points to your attention. And thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes. <laughs>